Recording a good, clean, crisp channel of audio is only half the equation when it comes to creating high quality videos for your projects and social media. And another thing is to edit that audio to make it pleasing to your audience's ear. I wanted to create this video following up my previous tutorial video about the Rode Wireless Go 2, which I'll link in the description below and the cards, because while getting a clear line of audio is awesome and necessary, what makes a video really stand out is cleaning up the audio with some basic editing. So in this video today, I'm going to give you a few tips on when you should consider editing your audio, as well as which plugins I love to use. These plugins can apply to any video or audio software to improve the quality of your sound, so keep on watching. And in case you're new here, I'm Sarah. I'm a content creator and creative director who wants to help you create and amplify your influence by up-leveling your personal brand, systems, and tech tools to get you there. I've been a creative all of my life and have experienced both in front of and behind the camera, which has given me a creative edge when it comes to content creation. Now, before I get into this video, remember to give this video a like, subscribe, and even share it with a friend as I'll be sharing more videos, tutorials, and brand and content creation tips just like this. So let's get into this video. Before I start, I wanna preface that I'm by no means an audio engineer, but I did study, or I needed to study logic in music college, which honestly was kind of boring at the time, but now looking Looking back on it, I'm super grateful to have learned some of the fundamentals when it comes to audio and sound. When looking and working with audio tracks, the main goal is to simply reduce any unwanted frequencies within the waveform, as well as to bring the high end and the low end from the audio waveform closer together to create a cleaner and more balanced sound. When would you want to consider diving deeper into editing your audio sound quality? Now, in my opinion, and this is just an opinion, that you'd want to focus on better sound quality on projects that have a longer lasting shelf life. So projects like YouTube videos, online video courses, maybe professional promotional videos and things of the likes. And I just don't think it's really necessary to be editing your audio on every single social media video unless you're repurposing from like a larger piece of content because I would, it would just simply take way too long all day and social media wasn't made to necessarily be super polished. And as far as the plugins go, the main ones I love to use and use as my foundational plugins are an equalizer or EQ, a compressor and a limiter. Now, if my sound needs even more cleaning, I may consider like a de if the S sounds within the audio are a little cringe to the ear, uh, noise removal and a de-hum if I can't get deeper unwanted sounds out of the EQ. So for example, I have a real life example of a recent client that I worked with and how I cleaned up their sound to make it sound a little bit cleaner. And in these videos, I use the Zoom H1N recorder and a simple lav mic from Amazon. And I'll link the gear that I love and use frequently in the description below if you're wondering. And now the first thing I always start with is the EQ. The EQ will help remove any unwanted frequencies within the audio track itself. The left side of the table here represents the low end frequencies and the right represents the high end frequencies. Now, I like to start by dragging out the low end frequency around that 50 to 60 range. And then from there, I'll basically start working through the different points on the graph. So around that 200 point, I usually like to bring up the the frequency, see where that noise is, that unwanted frequency and pull it down. Then I'll do the same for about that 500 mark, around that one to 2K mark as well. And then what I might do as a little bonus is that I will actually push up the high end just a little bit, predominantly for the female voice, just to get a little bit more of that high end of the voice in there. So here's a sample without the EQ. Tackling it, you know, tackling it um, one student, one family at a time. And here is one with. The next challenge right now or has been is you know, our it's a subtle and minor difference, but our ears are really good at sensing these sounds on the subconscious level. The next thing that I usually add is the compressor. And the whole purpose of the compressor is to make your track sound more polished by controlling maximum levels and maintaining higher average loudness. So what it does is bring the lowest end and the highest end of the waveform and compresses them together in order to create this more balanced sound. This is a good thing because it allows you to bring up the gain of the whole signal without clipping and even more so when you add a limiter onto your track, which I'll go over in the next step. This is the compressor that I like to use on Final Cut. And again, you can play around with any compressor that you wish and compressors are available in most common programs such as Logic, Final Cut Pro X, Premiere, etc. The last step out of the three main steps to cleaning up your audio is to add a limiter to your audio. A limiter is a type of compression with a really high ratio. And as its name suggests, 
limiting sets a limit or ceiling to the output level. So in other words, no sound beyond that threshold can get through. If you place a limiter with a threshold of zero decibels on a mix, the limiter will keep the mix from getting any louder than zero decibels. And they call limiters a brick wall for a reason. And the way that I like to use this limiter is simply to bring the audio to a level at which the audio should normally sit around for talking videos. Now the safe zone for your audio will be between minus 12 and minus six decibels. Anything over this could potentially start going into the yellow or the red, therefore may make the audio pop and crack, also known as clipping. So here is the limiter. So we're discovering um, a lot of behaviors. So that's a big challenge. So what we've done is we've hired um, a counselor to come in, that way they can speak. With For the bonus two plugins I personally like to use, I sometimes put a noise removal on to get rid of any additional noise that comes through the mic. Sometimes it's not possible to really get rid of all of the noise entirely, but it can definitely help. And I don't wanna to go too crazy with this one as it can really muffle the sound. So this is what it sounds like with it on. And uh, as well as parents. So that's been a big challenge behavior. We haven't seen the behavior um, to this degree ever. <laughs> and lastly, the hum removal. If you are still hearing any super low sounds like fans, background noise, etc., like in this example, I was in an uncontrolled live event. Therefore, there will still be some atmosphere sounds. However, whenever we can eliminate some of it, I always, always try. Again, I don't go too crazy with this one as it can distort the sound a little bit too. So there you have it, a quick, simple process for editing your audio, whether you're shooting with a lav mic, a wireless mic, a boom mic, etc. And if you did find this video useful, just remember to give it a like, subscribe, and follow for more tips on content creation, tech tools and tips, branding, and so much more. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.